Hello, this is Lars with another New to Crypto, New to DeFi video number nine in the series uh, that's made especially for folks who are just new to this field here at the DeFiStandard.com that uh, Patty XRP takes such good care of putting content on. Here's where you'll find the research and the teaching of Mickey B. Fresh. All right, this is another Flare video. This is about the sleeper, the FTSO, the Flare time series oracle. If you didn't see video number nine, two videos ago, I recommend going back and seeing that one. It's sort of a broad overview of the Flare network that has these two major sides. One is F assets, that was covered last in video eight. And now um, the sleeper, FTSO, the Flare time series oracle. So we hear the expression, uh, everything has its price. But uh, I have never put so much attention into price uh, as I have now learning about the Flare Network. And uh, there's a couple clues. One is the CEO of Flare, Limited Flare Limited, has said that this FTSO, the Flare Time Series Oracle, is the beating heart of the Flare Network. So that's one clue to sort of pay attention and figure, it, figure out what's going on. But the other one is just sort of the follow the money clue. Um, Flare is actually giving 10% per year uh, to reward the, the best pricing. And that's what I want to get into, uh, how it works and how you can participate in those rewards. And actually, so Flare, a lot of uh, blockchains have a set fixed number of, of tokens. And that's like the XRP ledger has 100 billion tokens and no more will ever be made. Flare has done something different. They're actually increasing the number of tokens each year by 10%. And that's a governance feature. It can be adjusted. In another video, I'm going to go into what governance means for the Flare network. It's uh, an amazingly important part of the Flare network. But anyway, to begin, a 10% inflation rate, they're going to increase the number of tokens. And when we hear uh, the word inflation, we typically think of that as a bad thing. We want to not have inflation in the system. Uh, but in this case, uh, inflation is really very positive. It matters what the inflation is directed towards. And this inflation, this increase of 10% uh, in the supply of flare tokens each year, is completely directed at rewarding decentralized price discovery. And to my knowledge, there's nowhere else on the planet that has fully decentralized price discovery. Nowhere else in blockchain is it fully decentralized or off blockchain. So that's the bet of Flare Network. And, uh, the CEO, Hugo, has said in really pretty direct terms, this is the beating heart of the Flare Network. So you can imagine that if all of these different assets, like we talked about in the last video, number eight, which I recommend you watching, but if all these different assets are going to come on board to Flare Network, right? everything from the different blockchains, Flare Network is being described as the blockchain of blockchains. But it's not just other blockchain values that will be coming on to Flare Network. It's also other assets outside of blockchain, even like gold or silver or stocks or real estate. So if they're all going to come onto the network, then having accurate price discovery, accurate pricing between those assets becomes critically important. And if you can do that in a decentralized, trustless way that can be trusted, that can be incentivized, that can be rewarded to make it increasingly accurate over time, sharper and sharper and sharper. Well, the Flare Network's bet is that, that that's a huge uh, motivation for people to trust bringing their assets onto the Flare Network. So how does this actually work? Um, as a Spark holder, a Flare uh, token holder, 
your each token comes with three components to it. One of them is the asset value. Another one is a governance vote. And a third one is a vote that you can delegate to an FTSO signal provider. Okay, so three parts, the asset value, the governance part. And what we're going to talk about is this third part, the part where you get to delegate the vote on your token to some entity that is out there working on providing accurate pricing. These are called signal providers, and there's going to be many different signal providers. So you designate your vote to a signal provider, and if the signal provider is chosen by the Oracle as being one of the, the uh, acceptable values, we'll get into all this in just a minute, if it's chosen as one of the acceptable values, then you will be rewarded for, um, for supporting that signal provider with your vote. So you see there's an incentive here, right? 10% of the network per year is going to reward the best choices by the signal providers for the most accurate pricing. Those that make uh, inaccurate pricing or not, not closest to the median, they will not be rewarded for that round. And you, in a completely decentralized way, you own your tokens, you get to choose where you put the vote. So that's another piece of making it decentralized. A couple different levels. One are the signal providers that are providing the votes. Another level is you as the token holder, you're delegating your vote to these different signal providers. All right, so let's say there's a hundred signal providers and everybody provides a different price. They can go out and grab their estimates any way they want to. There's no restrictions. They bring them all back and this is all happening automatically um, at a time interval. They bring them all back and Flare, the Flare Time Series Oracle, takes the middle half of all of the votes uh, of all of the prices so the lowest 25 percent are discarded the top 25 the highest are discarded those do not get rewarded so if you voted for those you won't get a reward in this round the middle half everybody there is going to get rewarded and how the ftso uses it they just average um, this price from the middle and that's the price for that round. So you see how it's entirely decentralized. There's no central actor that has um, the power or the responsibility for choosing that price. The signal providers, they're all making their best estimate based on whatever uh, means they have to collect pricing. Could be from an exchange or however they want to do it. And then the individuals who own Spark tokens are making their bets on who, which ones are the good ones. So it's a self-incentivizing process of always trying to get in the middle, the middle 50% of that um, estimate for the pricing on that round. Now, Flair put out a great white paper on it. There's lots of different details on, on how this like fundamentally works. But uh, that's kind of the broad overview of what happens. And every year, like I said, 10% appreciation in the number of tokens is all going to these people who have delegated their token votes to accurate price feeds. All right, so those accurate price feeds can now be made to uh, relate all of the different F assets. That was the last video. That's the other half of the Flare network relate them to one another and allow them to be used in the different applications that are going to be built on top of the Flare network. And those applications, you know, the first ones we know about are uh, Flare Finance, Trustline App, and there's many more, many more coming. So if you're going to have all of those different applications, you have to have assets that are backed trustlessly, right? Backed by the Flare uh, token. And you have to have assets that are properly um, priced against one another. And so this is the big game that Flare Network is playing, sort of providing this new foundation. Uh, and if they're successful, lots and lots and lots of value will choose to come here because it's such a solid foundation 
and it provides such a platform, such a basis from which these assets can be used. So just think about gold. If you ever invest in gold, you buy it, you take it home, you stick it under your mattress or some vault somewhere, and then it basically just sits there. And you hope that it will hold its stable value over time or maybe go up or something like that. But there's no use. You buy it, you hold it, it has uh, storage value, it has a value, and when you want to, you sell it. Imagine now gold being brought to the Flare Network as F gold. So once it comes on, it's related to all of the other assets via, um, via being backed with the collateral of the Flare token of Spark. And it's also now priced relative to all the other assets through this FTSO function. And as long as F gold exists on the network, it can be used in the different DeFi protocols, bank vaults, um, stable coins, all these different applications where gold now can earn a yield as F gold instead of just sitting under the mattress. So the utility, the velocity, the dynamic of value, um, if Flare Network is right, is going to be increasing a lot. And like I said last time in the video about the F assets, the more we can learn, so we can stand you know, in the river in the right place and collect the rewards, the value that Flare Network is giving out. They're giving out a lot of rewards to incentivize people to act in decentralized ways to make this network strong and useful for everything that will be built on top of it, all the applications, and its usefulness, utility to the whole uh, economic system of the globe. It's a big game they're playing, and everything we can figure out to, uh, to be ready for the launch in July, that will be an amazing thing. Well, maybe the launch in June. Who knows? All right, but it's coming, and uh, good wishes in getting ready, and hope this was useful. Put your comments in uh, down below, and then start digging into, if you haven't already, the videos of Mickey B. Fresh. Um, he goes into such detail about these different parts and really the implications and the power of what's coming. Uh, for the XRP Ledger, Flare Networks, and all the things that will be built on it. All right, thanks a lot.